This is part seven of the Looper Sampler um, project, uh, Loop Station. So in this part, part seven, uh, we're gonna go ahead and tackle the waveform display. So it would be great, you know, we have this little um, sampler that we can record and we have uh, playback possibilities. We can play and pause and record and then play back, which is nice. Now it would be actually great if we can see the waveform in processing. So basically we have to uh, take, grab this audio information in Super Collider, bundle it up into a package that can be displayed and then send all that data over to processing so that you can actually see what you've recorded, the waveform. Um, now I've come up with a method, it's, it's probably a bit clunky. It might not be the best way to do it. Um, so if anyone has suggestions, that would be great is to improve this, but um, it, it kind of, it more or less works, you know, it's a, it, it'll do. Waveform display just gives you an idea anyways of what, uh, it just gives you sort of a visual marker of what you've recorded and kind of how loud it is basically. All right, so, but there's, uh, it's this is also a good, this technique is also a good way to learn a bunch of things. So let's start with, um, let's start with just talking about the, the idea of the, the, so if we have a buffer, the idea of the buffer, it's basically just a really, really big giant table of numbers, right? So if we have a buffer and we're storing an audio file, say it's just a one second audio file, well that buffer is just a table with 44,100 slots in it, right? And each slot is a sample. It's some number generally between negative one and one. And uh, so, you know, slot one might be zero, slot two might be, you know, negative 0 0.001 or something like that, et cetera, et cetera. So you have uh, just a large table of numbers, really, uh, a whole bunch of numbers, 44,100 per second, depending on your sample rate. And, you know, uh, if you know, uh, if you know, remember some of your digital audio, there's so, so many reasons for that, why we need so many samples to uh, accurately, um, accurately represent music digitally. Okay, well, uh, so, you know, ideally, if we're displaying this visual information, we'd have, you know, for, so our, um, our, uh, um, our graphic, you know, our track, our little sequencer, the graphic of the sequencer is uh, 16 beats, or if at 60 beats a minute, it's, you know, uh, 16 seconds. So ideally, you know, we have this giant monitor that could display, you know, every sample that had, you know, 44,100 times 16. Well, uh, unfortunately we don't, and you know, that'd be impractical anyways. And so we have, uh, we have whatever we, you know, whatever size we make it, we can make it as big as we want, but you know, obviously only so much of it can fit onto the monitor. So in this case, we did a, we did a grid of a thousand, which, which seems a, a, a number that we can work with. So how do we cram, you know, whatever 16, 000, 16 times 44,100 down to an 1,000 point grid, you know? So that's basically our job right now, is to take this big buffer, which is filled with, it could be more depending if we change the beats per minute, and then resample it down to, to fit in a 1,000 point grid and still give us a, you know, a kind of accurate representation of what, um, what we recorded, okay? So uh, let me just have a quick look here. We're gonna use, um, we're gonna use this, uh, Super Collider has a few built-in things and that, that's what I'm saying. Uh, there's probably more built-in things that I just don't know about. So there's probably a, you know, a better way to do, do this, but there's a command called um, load to float array, okay? So it's load to float, yeah. and you apply this to a buffer, okay? So if we take a buffer, like uh, like you know our sound buff. Let me just recompile and do everything, and reboot it, and let's send all this stuff. So we have our sound buffer, okay, which is this buffer, which is in this case sixteen seconds long. Okay, we can run that command. We can do sound buff dot load to float array, okay, and that's going to create an array. Um, it's just it just converts that audio buffer to a, a, a number of arrays, array of numbers. Okay, it's just translating the data in a, in a, into a more uh, format, more palatable format. Okay, now this happens though. When this happens, it generates a, uh, it uses a, um, 
a function, okay? So basically, load the float array, then within that command, you have this sort, sort of scope, you're gonna execute some stuff, okay? And I just keep looking to back, All right, okay. So one of the ones, so we can actually look at the health file if you want. I think it's in buffer, oops. Yeah, it's in buffer. And it shows you, you know, basically a, uh, uh, a general, um, a general example here. You have the index, you have th three arguments, index, count, and action. Okay. So we're going to ignore the first two for now, and we're just going to have an action. So it's action is a function. So if you see, it says action, and then there's a function, these two curly brackets there, and it runs a function, okay? And basically, it passes this array into the function. That is a bit convoluted. It's a little bit confusing. This is kind of the way SuperCloud works. It works within these functions. You know, we'll just have to bear with it. So the first thing we do, we have to use the, so if we use this as um, any other sort of argument based thing, the first two arguments are other something other than action. So we have to label it. So we can just jump jump to the first uh, argument, okay? And then the action's is going to be uh, uh, a function, all right? And it's going to run this function, okay? Now, one other feature of this is the first argument being passed into that function, just like uh, OSC def passes like the message and the the timestamp and all these other things. This passes in the array as the argument. So the very first argument will be our array. So this is this buffer converted to an array. This is actually that. It's the it's the float array that represents this buffer. Okay, so that's our basic syntax. Like I said, it's a bit convoluted, but hopefully you understand. We call this we call this function on this this buffer, and this function has three arguments. One, two, we're ignoring the third argument is action, and the action is actually a function that is going to do whatever we want it to do. Okay, but the first argument being passed into that function is the actual array, is this converted array, all right? So this is what we're gonna deal with. We want to deal with this array, right? So I'm gonna just put a couple of lines in here so we, it's easier to work with. So basically, this is everything that's in the function, the two curly brackets, right? And the first line in our function is going to be this argument array, and we'll put a semicolon there. All right, so an array now is the sound buffer loaded uh, as an array, all right? Now, uh, so just bear with me. It's going to be a lot of a little bit of plotty kind of program steps, but uh, programming concepts and steps. But uh, well, worth it in the end. I just try to think of this as uh, manipulating numbers, which uh, digital audio essentially is. It's large, big blocks of numbers. So now within this this action, we're gonna um, we're gonna resample that array. Okay. So I'm gonna create a couple different things. I'm going to um, for some reason, I pass it as a as a variable. So uh, I'm gonna for some reason I pass it. We'll just go ahead and copy what I do. I'm gonna create a var. I'm gonna call buff array. Okay, and I'm gonna pass that array that's coming in to this buffer. I think it's just for somewhere down the line, it, it gets a little bit easier to use it as a variable. Well, I'm not sure why, but we'll just give it a try. So we're gonna say buff array equals that array that was passed in. Okay, it's just I'm just renaming it, I guess, essentially. Okay, and then um, then we're going to resample it. Okay, so I need a sample size, so another variable, and I'm going to call it sample size. Okay, and in our case, our sample size is 1,000, right? Because that's how many points we have. That's how many pixels we have, width uh, wise, to display that 16 seconds. So we're going to say sample size equals 1,000. Now, of course, if you resize your canvas in your processing code, you just have to remind yourself somehow, put a comment or something so you that you resize that sample size. Uh, otherwise, it'll just draw the first 1,000 pixels or whatever. Okay? And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're gonna have this thing called, I don't know why I call it resamp. Um, uh, I guess oh, it's sort of the resamp increment, really. Um, but I'll just call it resamp, okay? And what I mean by this resample increment is that basically one of these, one each of these 1,000s, right, each pixel is gonna be worth uh, X number of samples, right? So if we're doing one second, 
of um, audio, each one is going to be, um, what is it, uh, 44.1 samples, is that right? Yeah, so 44.1 samples, right? So for each pixel, uh, it represents 44.1 samples, right? Just a simple division, okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do simple division here. We're going to do um, the buffer A. We're going to say uh, resamp equals... Okay, so this is just a, a couple little bits of math that we need to do to, to do our final calculation, to do our final resampling, okay? Uh, so basically, we're trying to figure out how many, um, how many samples to cram into one of these points, you know? Uh, or to, in other words, we're only, gonna, we're only gonna take one every, so if it's one second, we're only gonna take one sample every 44.1 sample. So we'll take number one, zero, and then we'll take, I guess this is, Point. But so let's just get rid of the point. And then we'll take number zero. We'll take number forty-four. We'll take number eighty-eight, et cetera. We'll take number, you know, whatever the next one, one thirty-two, or something like that. We'll just take that sample, and that will be the representative sample for all that. Of course, you know, there might have been a lot of action in those other samples. But again, this is a very rough sort of display of how the audio works, uh, and at least gives us a visual um, in a way that's you know hand easily handled by processing as well. Okay, so what did what was the what did I exactly say? I say um, buffer a size div divided by sample size, and then I rounded it off. So buffer a, and remember this is just a renamed array. That's the array that's this represents a sound buffer, and buffer a dot size is a command I run in it to to sh tell me how long it is. Okay, so if it's one second, it'll this buffer a dot size will give me. 44.1, if it's, you know, 16 seconds, it'll give me 44.1, 44,100 times 16, okay? So, and then I divide that by the um, SAMP size, I think. Is that not right? SAMP size. Yep, okay, right, obviously. So, we want to divide the, the total number by the 1,000 to get how many, you know, how many things we have to skip and dot. This is the area where I think could be improved. I'm not sure. <clears throat> I think if I really want to do something sort of tricky, I would take some kind of average or something like that. There must be better resampling algorithms. But this is pretty straightforward and clear, and it gives it gives a fair a fair representation, you know, a fair representation of what because we're skipping a lot of samples. We just take one every you know every how many thousand samples to just cram it into this one thousand. But you know, it, it's it's good enough. So uh, you're right. So we're gonna take we're gonna skip that many things, and that's what we're gonna to do to resample it, okay? So now, um, right, okay, so now resamp array, we're gonna have another, now this is gonna be our resampled array, so we'll call it R-E-S-A-M-P-A-R-A, -R -R -A, resampled array. So we're gonna create uh, just a blank array for now, and we're gonna give it a size, so R-E-S-A-M-P-A-R-R-A-Y -R -R -A -A equals, oops, okay, it's gonna be the, um, uh, an array dot, dot new clear. This is just a, a, a way to uh, start a brand spanking new array. And um, we're going to call it, the size is going to be the sample size. Okay. So we're going to create a brand spanking new array and we're going to make it the sample size. Okay. Okay, now is where the rubber hits the road. So we've kind of got our preliminaries and you'll see how we use these uh, uh, now. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna run a for loop and we're gonna resample this array. Let me, let me just quickly review for loops here. It's a little bit different in SuperCollider. Uh, you use the word do and then you just run a function a lot of things in SuperCollider are done with functions. So let's create an array. Let's go A equals, and we'll just make an array of, say, uh, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, like that, okay? And then what you can do is you can do a couple different things, all right? You can run, well, sorry, let, let, me, let me start with the basics here, and then we'll do the array. So back up a second. Uh, usually you just use the word do. So if you want to do... If you want to loop something six times, you go six dot do, and then you uh, generate a function that it's going to do it on. So if I want to print, say something, hey, yay. OK, 
okay, six times. If I do that, it goes yay, 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 and just returns the number six, okay? Now, in a do operation in a for loop, say for loop, but I'll still call it for loop because that's the basic, you know, concept is, uh, your first argument is the, uh, uh, is the index. You have an automatically built-in index. So if I go arg i or arg ix or whatever, okay, and then I go uh, i post line, uh, not in quotes. It's going to increment, so it, it i updates itself every loop. Huh? So there you go, zero through six. It starts at zero. It goes through to uh, sorry to five, and a six is returned because I guess that's the number of times we did it. Oh, this is post line thing. Is it still? Anyways, uh, yeah, zero through five really. Okay, so that's the way the for loop or the for loop is done in SuperCollider. Interesting sort of shortcuts. Um, for example, that's why I started with this array. So if you can do, you can run the 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 do or the for loop do, uh, on an array. Okay, and then in, in that case, uh, and you can do a dot do. Okay, so a is a set of numbers, and it will now run uh, uh, and a loop on the members of the array, and it gives you an extra argument. So you have arg, and I just call it, and then. I'll call it index ix. Okay, so the first it is the actual value, whatever is in the first uh, index of the array. And the next time it loops, it, go, it moves to the next thing. Now, in SuperCollider, arrays could be mixed data types, so they all, don't all have to be numbers. Like this could be a function, this could be a synth, this could be a symbol, a word, they can be really anything, right? But all it represents is the, the actual thing in that slot. Okay, so if I post it, if I go it dot post line, okay, and I run that, uh, you see, uh, oops, right? It, oh, I sorry, I see. It returns the it returns the thing. So it goes seven six five four three two one, and then returns the whole array, the a. Huh? That's why six was returning because it returns that. Okay, and then the second argument you get is the so we'll do post, and then we'll do something like. Um, uh, we'll do a you know a little space or something like that. Dot post, and then we'll do a um, i x dot post line. Okay, so now the second argument is automatically in the index number, so you can you still haven't lost that. So you see, you have seven index zero, six is the the it, uh, index one, five is the it, index two, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so that's how that works. So we're gonna run in our um, in our now so what we want to do is resample and basically what we'll do is we'll resample it basically we're going to just take the value it's kind of a bit crude but we're going to take the value uh every resamp samples right so in, if i want to cram whatever uh we might as well get a number here what is what is uh 16 times 44 1,000 equals, so if you want to do, if you want to take an array that's 705,600 long and want to resample that down to an array that's 1,000 long, we're going to take the buff array, the, the buff array, the resample one, so whichever, uh, well, we might as well calculate that as well. Uh, so we're going to divide that by 1,000. Oh, we just take two. So every 7,056 samples will take, a, a, it will become one, uh, something in the resampled array, okay? So obviously that's a lot of samples, so there's a lot could be going on, but in terms of the grand scale of things, we still get a pretty good view of the um, of the waveform display, okay? But like I said, if you know you wanna comment on this or something, must be a, probably a, a more accurate and a better way to do this, some kind of interpolation or something. There might even be a super clutter built-in thing. But in any case, I'm just gonna do this way, and it's a good way to practice our do loops. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the resamp array, we're gonna take, sorry, the buffer array. Oops. Okay. And I think we just do, we run a loop on that one, right? Then we do dot do. Okay, and then we have our function there. And so we're gonna run that function. I'll just give us a little space. And then my first arguments, as I mentioned, are the it and the x. So arg, it will be the actual thing, the actual item, and x will be the index number, okay? 
just reminding myself how we did this now. And um, and then we're going to use this modulo. Now, I went over that in the last tutorial, so I won't go over it again. We're just ba basically going to use modulo to count through the index numbers until um, we get to the proper index number. Okay, so we wait. So we're going to say, uh, it, it's going to loop everything. We're going to say, we're going to use an if statement. Uh, we're going to say, and if statements are slightly different syntax, but you'll get it from this. So if, oops, <coughs> and then it, it has a scope if, and the first argument is the what? What your, the condition. So uh, it's uh, if I X, and then modulo, and I'll explain this, resamp, k equals zero, then, and then the conditions are then do that, or if it's not true, do that. But you can leave uh, one of them out, or you can leave the the uh, the or else out, uh, which I don't think we use, right? R right, and so it's just a matter of keeping track of all your brackets and stuff, okay? So if this is true, comma, then do this, this function, okay? And that's how the if statements work. And so let me explain this part, all right? So the resamp is this number, seven, well, divided by 1,000, so 7056, right? 7056. That means uh, if I divide the total number of samples by 1,000, um, yeah, right, and then you get, so you get a 7056. So every 7056, we're gonna take one thing. So that just does that. So it's gonna go through the whole array, it's gonna count, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that, but it's gonna use this modulo. All right. So if you remember, so when you get to seven thousand, what is it, fifty six, seven thousand fifty seven. So, well, when you get to seven thousand fifty six, sorry, there's no remainder, so this equals a zero, right? If this is seven thousand fifty six, uh, seven thousand fifty six modulo seven thousand fifty six will equal zero. Okay, seven thousand fifty seven modulo 7056 will equal one, remember? So it resets every 7056. So you get basically this to be true once every 7056 times, okay? I hope that was clear enough. Thus giving you, a, you know, a, a resample rate. You know, you can just take a sample every, every time it gets to that number, it gets to zero, it resets itself. All right, so that's how you use that as kind of a counter. Um, so uh, then we'll just, when that happens, we'll pop that value into our new array, all right? So then we'll say if I X modulo resamp, which is our, you know, resample rate or whatever you want to call it, equals zero, then let's pop in, we'll say, uh, and this is a way since, uh, well, what did I do? Did I add, I'm sorry. Uh, right, okay. So then we'll say the resamp, a R A Y, and then we'll give it the number. So it'll be, um, all right, we have to have a separate counter, okay? So I'll put uh, I'll put a CT, okay? Or I can do, if I wanna do index, I'll do I X two maybe, something like that. I think I'd use CT in the other one. Well, we'll just use CT, okay? And when do I initialize CT? Let's see, I initialize that, uh, right, CT, okay. So we need a, a separate counter here, so, I forgot one thing. We're gonna make a variable here called CT. That's our counter, okay? And we're going to say CT equals zero, okay? So CT equals zero before we start the, the loop. And when we start the loop, we'll only update CT every time we add something to it. So it'll only happen, you know, 1,000 times instead of being this IX that happens, you know, whatever it is, 705,000 times. Uh, plus, okay? So we'll say resample array CT equals, so this is the index number, so the very zero, so the very time, first time it'll be zero. So resample array slot number zero is going to equal this, whatever number comes up in the, the resamp, um, in the buffer array, okay? Their actual sample, which, you know, so just, it's a matter of keeping track of this stuff, will be this it, huh? Because it goes through, remember I was telling you about the for loops it actually returns the actual thing, the actual thing that's in that slot, okay? Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. So, uh, right, 
CT equals it, and then we're just going to make it a float, okay? <coughs> so we're just going to guarantee that that's a float dot. This is probably completely redundant, but sometimes I just like to make sure uh, it doesn't see that as something different than the float type. Okay, and then we're going to upgrade this counter, update that counter, so the next time it moves to the next slot. It'll be 1, and then 2, and then 3. So I say CT equals CT plus 1. Okay, so hopefully that's clear enough. Let's have a look and make sure I did that right. Yeah, yeah. And then, oh, this is something different, and then that's something else. Okay. Okay, that's great. That's exactly where we're. So basically, uh, now we've run this um, this for loop, this do, and we have an it and the x, and we're saying if, and we're resampling every, you know, so many samples. We're saying if that equals zero, then that'll give us that sample. We're going to take our newly resampled array, and we're going to say it equals that, that slot number equals the thing coming from the, the buffer. Okay, and then we upgrade the counter. We update the counter so that next time it moves, it moves to the next slot. Okay, so hopefully that's a little bit clear, but basically this is just a resampling way. We're, you know, we're waiting every seven, we're taking one of the samples every 7,000 samples. Okay, and that's going to be a representative sample to draw. All right, so then once this is all done doing, this resamp array should be filled. It should be 1,000 long, because that's sample size, and it should be filled with a representative sample from this buffer array. So, you know, it should, should at least give a representation of the waveform. All right. And then basically at this point, we're going to send that whole thing to processing, okay? And uh, let me just see how I do. I think I, I run it as a function, uh, right? How is this? Right, okay. Okay. Buffer and then track number. All right, those happen later. Okay, so um, yeah, so basically we I encapsulate this whole thing as a function, okay, to run. And the last thing I need to do at the very end is to send that away. Uh, this is all there, okay. So basically the last thing I need to do is then send that information, this new array, to processing, okay. And then we have to do some a bit some fancy things in processing, but we'll we'll sort that out uh, later. Um, all right. So uh, right. So basically, we up up way up high here in our things. Oh, we already set up processing, right? Of course, because we're sending the index uh, index number. So we already have processing. So basically, we just have to send processing this array. So it's a, uh, and we're going to use a special thing because it's such a big uh, bundle of information. We're going to bundle it all, and we're going to send it as a bundle. Okay. So we're going to do, instead of send message, that's our typical one, uh, in like the buffer index we have, sorry, git index, we have processing that send message. We're going to send bundle, okay? So after we run that loop and we fill this array with all the values, a thousand values, then we'll do pros, P-R-O-C, which is that net address, back to processing, and we'll do send bundle, okay? And then it's looking for uh, uh, what is the looking for send bundle zero point zero uh, resamp array. I'm not sure what the arguments are. So in this case, zero point zero and then resamp. I've forgotten what that first argument is. I wonder if it'll give it to me. Uh, Time, right? Okay, right. So, uh, yeah, that's what it is. So, you can put a delay on it. Okay, so send bundle allows you to send an array. And you can put a delay on it. So, if you want to send right away, you just put zero. If you wanted to wait one second and then send it, you just put one. Okay? And then I'm sending this array that's been filled. That's this 1,000 long. Okay, phew. That was a lot of sort of hard hauling there. But hopefully, you got that. Hopefully, that was a little bit clear enough. But this basically now is just is going to allow us to resample that array. <coughs> Let me shrink that a little bit. It's going to allow us to resample the array 
uh, a buffer, sorry, resample the buffer into a size, you know, a size that could be drawn, and then to send that whole array over as a, a chunk of data to be used by processing. And then we'll have to grab it on the other side and then do something with it, okay? The last thing I'm gonna do is gonna encapsulate this entire thing into a function, and I think I call it, it'll just be easier to execute, so I just call it waveform, so tilde wave form and equals and then open function and then at the end of it all close the function and then to re um, re indent and everything you select all and you go to edit auto indent and it push everything over okay so now I have a function now called waveform now it's just going to be used uh, you know on demand now it's something that I can run when I need to run it okay instead of uh, something that gets run uh, when I execute. So it's a bit like these OSC defs and stuff. So let's stick this waveform function within our body of code that gets run, maybe just after all the OSC defs. I guess it really doesn't matter. Okay. So now it's a function to be run. All right. So what I want to do now is it's on demand as well. So basically I want to receive a a uh, message from processing and when I receive that then I'm going to run that function and it will send everything um, to um, it will send everything to processing okay so I just call it wave frm so I'm going to make a osc def and I'm going to call it wave Away from, and I, my function that I'm going to run, and then uh, it'll be the same name, OSC address, a form. Okay, that's my OSC def, and basically I just want to send to uh, processing. No, I want to run that function. I don't even want to send it to processing. I want to run the function. So I'm going to go wave. It's going to dot. I think I have to do dot value. Do I? dot value okay waveform dot value okay right so it's going to run oops it's going to run that function when it receives this osc message this osc def will run this function and in this function it'll make all these calculations and then it'll send this bundle to processing okay so let me just save that and let me just uh recompile and boot and all that business and just see if we made any mistakes hopefully it's happy enough. Nope, doesn't like it. Buffer array not defined. Okay. <coughs> so buffer array equals array. So maybe that's why I put all those arguments up there. Um, sorry, I just it's I think it's just a question of where I uh, initialize those arguments. Um, arg array there. Okay, or did I just spell it wrong? Maybe I just spell. Oh yeah, I spelled it wrong. That's all. Hopefully that works. Oh yeah. Okay, so it works. Uh, and then we start our initial synth. Well, let me just reset everything just in case I made some boo boos. Okay, and then start those. Okay, so that's running, and hopefully that that's going. But you know, it's not doing anything. It's not doing any calculation. It's waiting to receive that. And then it's going to do a calculation. So I can I can send myself. We don't know if it works yet because I have to run the OSC def. So I can say I can make a n equals a net ADDR, and I'm going to go one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one. Oh, I'm just making something to send to myself. Just a, a, a tester port number five seven one two zero. I'm going to send to myself, and then I'm going to do n dot send message and I'm going to send the message um, WAVFRM and no arguments and then see what happens okay and it should run well we can we can double check that by uh, why don't we print why don't we print one of these why don't we print we'll just make a really long print we'll say um, it dot post ln so when it runs it's going to Every time it runs this loop, it'll print all the its. Okay, so like 7,000 of them or something like that. So let's run that. Oh, I have to send this again since I made a change to the 
server, I guess. Okay. And then run that command. Yeah, so it's all zeros, you know, but it should be about 7,000 zeros. So that works. Great. Okay. Wonderful. Oops. Oh, I, I blocked it now, so. Uh, because it's too much to print out, I guess. Sorry about that, Super Collider. Will you at least recompile for me? No, won't do anything. Okay, I think I'm going to have to... Oh, there it goes. Oops. Okay, <laughs> it just got hung up because it had too many things to print. Oh, and I was trying to probably send this bundle and know where to send it to. Okay, well, in any case, let me save that just in case I do break it. And I think it just does it once. Hopefully it just does it once. This is buffer.do. Buffer is equal to... All right, I'm just going to run that. Ah, no, I, I, I avoided that whole do yet. That's good. Okay, uh, hopefully, gosh, hopefully that's okay. Um, we'll find out, won't we? Um, now, uh, bear with me now because we're going to have to make some changes in processing as well because we're sending a different type of information over and it's kind of big. And the OSC library in processing is a bit delicate about the way it handles it. So this is a, a slightly esoteric, but hopefully not um, too difficult to just uh, adapt. Okay, so we're going to have to change the way we uh, uh, initialize the OSC machinery. All right, and I'm just going to because I kind of forget. So basically, this bit of code here, instead of going OS equals new OSC P5 this like that, that's kind of a simple way. We're going to create a sort of property thing, and we're going to create. Uh, we're going to. We're going to, I guess, make the data bigger or something. I think we're setting some properties, and then when we um, we're going to initialize OSC equals new instead of the address, you can also use a different thing, which is a a, a list of properties. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to give this side by side so we can just copy from it and understand what we're doing. Okay, so we're going to do this OSC properties. We're going to create one OSC properties. And we're going to call it, I say properties, but I just call it prop. Equals new OSC. Okay, and then I think it needs to be initialized just with an empty parentheses like that. Okay. And then we're going to set a couple of the properties. We're going to go prop dot set listening port. And that's the same thing we did here, one, two, three, two, one. Okay. One, two, three, two, one. Okay. And then we're going to set this datagram size. I think that's the um, that's the key component there. Set datagram. And we're going to go five, one, three, six. Okay. Uh, I guess that's a minimum size. You can set it bigger, I suppose. I think it depends on your memory. Um, and then instead of initializing it this way, one, two, three, two, one, we're just going to use the property uh, file. So it's kind of like an initialization file. You set some properties, and then you initialize the OSC machine with that property, these properties set. Okay, so it's just a more specific way of starting the OSC machinery with some specific things, some, some specific items set. Okay, and then uh, I had taught you before in earlier tutorials that we were going to use... Um, that OSC plug thing to forward. And I think we do it. Yes, we do do it. I think it's in the index thing. We forward, um, use this OSC plug to forward, as a forwarding service, to forward uh, messages coming in, and then we forward it up to um, a, a, a function that we've written, and then it it's a kind of a tidy way of doing that. Okay, But I think the bundles cannot be handled that way for some reason, and I, I think I discovered this and I forgot why. But um, for some reason, we can't use the plug service. It doesn't work that well. So we're going to use this OSC event, which is a sort of default event. That's the normally normal way you re use to receive messages in OSC. You use this OSC event, and it passes a message, and then you do a number of different things. I guess it's a, kind of a, like just a more manual way of passing an OSC message that comes in to some function in your code. Okay, So we'll go ahead and go void. O S C E with a capital E V E N T, and uh, the one argument it takes is the actual O S C message that's coming in. So it's a lot like the O S C def in uh, Super Collider. This is a listener, except it takes in all the messages. 
You're not, and you do within this uh, function, you do your checking, you do your parsing. Okay, and we'll have a scope there. Okay, now we're going to check if the address panel S buff. Oh yeah, I neglected to send send the right message because we're sending. Ah, right, that's the first thing. That's what I have to do. Okay, sorry about this. Okay, so we do, I did forget one step in our little waveform function that's gonna calculate this, okay? What we have to make sure is in our bundle, since this is a whole big array, that the first item of our bundle is actually the OSC address, the one we're sending to, all right? So in, in the case of our send message, we, you know, said end send message waveform, we added that, okay? Um, this is just a big bundle of data. It's that thousand pieces of, uh, thousand bits of information, thousand floats. But we have to make sure our first one popped in there is the actual um, OSC address, all right? So we're gonna make this sample size equals 1,000 and, uh, How's we do? All right. So our resample right now has to be one bigger because we're gonna we're gonna tuck tuck something at the very beginning of it. So we have to do sample size plus one. Okay. And then we're going to uh, what? Let's see. S buff right insert. Okay. So then we're gonna insert. We're gonna use this insert command, and it's gonna insert that S buff. And we do it before we send, obviously. Yeah, just before we send. Okay. So we're going to insert this. So we're going to do, we're going to take this resample array, okay? And we're going to use the insert command. So we're going to say resamp, A R A Y dot insert. And this is just a function built into the uh, kind of like array handling tools. Basically, insert will squeeze something at the very beginning of your array or wherever you want it, I think. I think you can designate which ones it's going to. So insert to slot zero. S buff, so the first argument is your which slot you want to insert into with the very first one. And then we're going to insert the symbol, which is our OSC address, S buff. Okay. So this is this is good. I mean this tutorial will be good. It's probably the most difficult one in the series. It's the most sort of programmery uh, one. So just bear with it. See if you can get through it. If you don't understand what's going on, repeat it a couple times. Hopefully you'll get it. In any case, so we're going to insert this S, uh, S buff into zero. And so now our resample array will be that entire array of numbers of the 1,000 samples, except the, the very first entry will be this word S buff, which is our address. Okay, so let's save that. We're going to have to re-execute re all that code anyways. And then, um, so when it comes in, we're going to check. Uh, so when we receive messages in processing, the first thing we do, you know how we do a, a separate OSC def here in Super Collider, and it listens for just the one message. In processing, or at least with the OSC P5 library, it it, it 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 takes in all the messages and it and it passes it along as this variable message, but then it asks you to um, parse it afterwards. Okay, so we'll have to parse that. So we'll just make sure we're going to use all that. So all these, all these bits, these little bits with the dots and stuff are just built-in functions to that OSC machinery, built-in methods and stuff. So we're going to use if, and we're going to do msg.check addr pattern. Basically check its address. And we're going to say it's going to check and make sure it is this s buff message. Okay. And if it is that s buff message, if that is true, then we execute some code, all right? And this, again, is just this built-in language, and you can just look it up or whatever uh, in the OSCP5 library, all right? Or in examples. Okay, now, uh, then we're going to, uh, right. Then we're going to fill an, uh, an array. So we have to make an array and that's a bit looks a bit different here. Customize this code to work with multiple tracks. But since we're just working with one track, we're going to create a float array uh, to hold all those samples. Okay. So the way you do that is you go float. Okay. And then you use the bracket, and that just says it's going to be a float array. And we'll just call it SAMP A R A Y SAMP array. Okay. Now you do have to initialize that float array. 
and I do that down here, I think. Yeah. Okay, and so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to initialize it in setup, and then we're going to fill it with zeros for now. Okay, so uh, we'll do that after all the OSC stuff. We're going to say sample array equals new. And the way you initialize a, an array of anything, new float, and then in square brackets you put the the um, the that size, right? All right. So, do I have a? Oh, and this is where I use this w and uh, height. Okay. So, um, I apparently in the new processing, you have to use numbers in here. Uh, you can't pass variables, but we'll have just sort of redundant variables then. INTW equals 1,000. That'll be our width. And INT uh, H equals, uh, what is it? 150. So we'll have those as variables. Okay. And so our sample array needs to be um, W long. Okay. So we can change that. And I think there's a number of other places that, that W would be useful. Or we can use the width. Uh, but we might not use the entire width of the canvas. We change some things later on. Okay, so W is good. So a new float uh, array that's W long. So that's initialized now. This is done in setup. And then we're going to use a for loop to just insert zeros into everything. So just so they're not nil. Because it won't be able to draw a nil value. Okay, it'll draw the zero but not the nil one. So then we just use a for loop. And we can... This is, will be a small one, so you can put it all on one line. There's a shortcut, so you don't need all the little curly brackets. So we'll say for int i equals zero. i is less than samp a r r a y dot length. Now you notice in supercollider it's size, and here it's length. Um, and then we'll say i plus plus. So it's going to for loop, and then without, if you keep everything on the same line, you don't have to put all those curly brackets. And we'll just say um, samp. I'll make this bigger so you can see it on one line. I'll say samp array, and then it'll be i. So the i ith of the samp array will equal to zero. So it'll loop through all of those, all thousand of those, and fill them with zeros. So that's all that does. Okay, so now we have our samp array working. Now we're going back to our thing. We're checked to make sure it's the right address. Now, if it's the right address, then we just have to do a, a bit of parsing. Like I said, there's a very sort of manual process just because of the type of data, it's this big array. And I think this is the only way, again, if anyone knows a better way to do this, that's great. This is the only way that I know of that the OSC P5 library handles this stuff well. It doesn't work if you do it with a plug or any other way. All right, and then we're just gonna basically um, fill uh, in the fill in the um, the samp arrays now the the just to rem just to reiterate that the number zero remember in super collider has been snuck in as the address so the first thing that we put in is this address s buff uh, and that's at zero so we have to skip that zero okay so we're gonna uh, put an additional if message in here we're gonna say if i is greater than zero okay oops just so that we don't take in s buff doesn't get entered as the first value. Okay, then we'll say um, we'll say samp a r a y i equals, and then we just have to do a little parsing. Use again the OSCP five libraries. Uh, um, I think it's just message dot get. So yeah, so msg, which is our incoming message. That's what the name we called it here msg.get and then uh, get which one i so that'll be the ith one of that array so it's sending this array and then we also have to declare its data type too okay so it'll be a float dot float value like that okay and then the parentheses i guess these are functions these are methods in in oscp5 library so you need to include these these empty brackets okay so I'm pretty sure that's it right so it'll get this so basically this OSC event is going to fill our array uh, with when it gets this s buff 
So when it comes in, when this array comes in and the first item is sbuff, it'll check the pattern, make sure it's okay, yep. It will, it will, oh, I didn't write my for loop, sorry. So this needs to be all couched within a for loop. Sorry about that. So for int i, same as we did before equals, oops, equals zero. I is less than um, message msg dot. Now I think we have to use, all right, buff size. Oh, we have a buff size. Okay, that's what I should do uh, then. So I use width, but in fact, uh, buff size, it might not always be the width. Okay, so um, we'll make another integer. We'll call it buff, S-I-Z-E, and we'll have this equal to W for now, the width. Well, we'll just make it equal to 1,000 for now. Okay, and, and we will adjust that later. So uh, if message... Dot, so it's not the length of the message, but we'll do is less than buff size. Okay. And then I plus plus. And we're going to have to pop that into there. It, it contains this if and a little T. Okay. Let me just go over that. I went over that quick. So I just forgot to say the for loop. All right. I got to forgot to insert the for loop. So it's this is the machine that takes in all the o incoming OSC messages. The first thing it's going to do is going to check to make sure that address pattern is the S buff. And the way it does that is it checks the very first entry of that array. Since it's, it's an array coming in, it's checking the very first entry and it says, oh, it's S buff. Then it passes on to this for loop. So the, we're going to loop through buffer size, which should be the same size as the buffer coming in. We just have to make sure we harmonize the variables here. So when I put in that function 1000 sample size, okay, then here we have to make sure our, oops, here we make sure our buffer size is 1000 as well because that's what's coming in, okay? So it's going to say i is less than buffer size. I'm going to count all the way up to 999 and then increment plus plus. And then within the loop, if i is greater than zero, that just allows us to skip the first one, which is this address s buff. So it starts on one, basically, that's all. So actually, we can just do int one if we want. That would probably be a e easier way to do that. A uh, much easier way to do that. Get rid of that if. So for well, starting on one, so sample array i, oops. Oops, then I have to go back though, huh? Shoot. Uh. You know what, actually, an easy way to do this would be to um, get sample array of i and just make this i plus one. Get message i plus one, because we want to start, it's the message we want to get, right? The message is that that array coming in, but this first item is s buff. So if we get i plus one, we can just get zero. So when it's zero, zero, we're going to get zero plus one, we're going to get the, the one-ith one of the message. Okay, and hopefully this works. I changed this a little bit. Uh, and why don't we just have it print? Um, I don't know what we can do. It's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of them, so I guess we could just print be a thousand of them. So uh, um, well, I just was print each value then as it comes in. Sure, why not? Uh, this one, message dot get i plus one. Just to see if it's, it'll be a bunch of zeros, but to see if it's working. So back here, recompile, boot. I think we're almost there. I think we're really getting there. Send that. Send our initial synths. Go run this. Hopefully it works, please work. It does. And, uh, ooh, right, S buff, what? All right, we have to send it a waveform. So we'll just run this waveform. We'll send it from here, but later on we'll send it from processing. Oh, send message understood because, okay, uh, let, me, let me resolve this, I'll be right back. It's a simple mistake of just not 
having initialized my test address. So there is something buggy going on. I seem to be, um, oops, creating creating some havoc uh, when I do actually run the function. Um, okay. Well, in any case, let me uh, let me just yeah let me just splice in here. Um, I'll just figure out what what's going on and continue on. I think pretty it's pretty much there though. So um, I'll just I might have picked up a bug or two there. All right, so it turns out that I forgot to restart, but let's see if I can pick up, restart the recording. So let's see if I can pick up where I left off. I think what happened was we were sending some messages and it wasn't getting in to a processing okay. So the, the thing I had to change there was, uh, remember we abandoned this if thing? I tried to be clever. Well, I've gone back to it for some reason. I'm not sure why just yet, but something to do with the way I'm calculating things or something like that. So we'll go back to this instead of that being one, we'll go back to that being zero. We'll add this if statement back in. So make sure you put it before the sample array there and after uh, after the sample array bit, you put that, put that curly bracket in to end that if, okay. And if it's greater than zero, so we just won't deal with the very first one when i equals zero. And then we just make sure we don't we take away the plus one from this. This used to be plus one. So we're going to do sample array i zero equals the message i zero. For some reason, it it, it it lops off this, I think. It lops off this s buff, you know, and then pulls that in. Okay. And then sample array then will be populated now with the array we're pushing from super collider. All right. These floats. And it'll fill our sample array, which is nice. Now, uh, I'll... I'll just leave my bits up. So now the next bit, the next step really is to draw um, draw the sample array. So we have these thousand values. It kind of represents our waveform more or less. And we're going to draw it. So we're going to go up, we'll find a good place to put this waveform. We're going to do it under, we're going to go into the draw area. So draw. We're going to do it in front of our track background. But do what do we want it under? I guess I put it here under the beat grid. So we can either have it on top of the beat grid, above it, or under it. But why don't we put it under it so we can see the beat grid. So we do that. And I'll just retype this stuff. You can see it here, but I'll retype this stuff. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to first draw our waveform. So we're going to say waveform. OK. OK, and then uh, so basically we're going to have to loop through um, the idea is that we draw lines, okay? So the idea is that we have a grid. Um, let me just run this so you can see it. The idea is we have a, a, a grid here, okay? And we have a thousand points, you know, a thousand pixels across, right? And so we're gonna take, we're gonna start on the very first pixel and draw a line up to the second pixel. We're gonna go from pixel zero and then draw up to, you know, start zero, zero, and then draw up to the pixel, whatever amplitude is for the pixel one, and then pixel two, you know, for that one, pixel three, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So we're just going to, and since we have a thousand points in our, in our value, in our array, we can draw lines up and then lines down, lines up, lines down for each pixel. Yeah. And that'll give our way forward display. So the idea is that we, uh, first let's set up our parameters that we want or you know colors and such so let's do a stroke weight of one just one pixel long and then we'll do a stroke color of white 255 okay and then uh we're going to draw some lines okay but we have to do it in a for loop because we're going to loop through our um our um samp Samp array, right? Of uh, that represents our waveform that we pulled in from Super Collider. So for, oops, int i equals zero, i is less than samp a r a y dot length i plus plus, and uh, then for each one, uh, we're going to draw a line. Okay, so line. And remember, line is x1, oops, y1 to x2, y2, okay? So this is where it gets a little tricky because we want to draw from, um, 
uh, pixel zero to pixel one and then pixel one to pixel two, right? So we wanna just draw like that. Um, so we wanna be able to include both i or zero and then i plus one, one, right? Now the only problem with doing it that way is when we get to the end of our array, we run out of number. So if we get to the end, there's no whatever, one, there's no uh, sample 1001 and uh, the processing will complain that we've run out of values in that array. Okay, so we'll just do it backwards. So basically we'll start with number one, we'll make i equals one, so we'll start with entry number one in this sample array, okay? But then our first point will start at i minus one. So we'll say um, it, x will be, so x's could just be the i's, right? Because we're counting through a thousand pixels. So we don't have to refer to anything there. They're just either zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way through to a thousand, right? So it'll just be i. So if you put i here for the first x, it'll actually be one, but we want it to be at pixel zero. So we'll just do i minus one. And that way we can use draw it to i, okay? So i minus one in the very first will be zero because it starts at one and then minus one will be zero. So x zero, x is zero. Now. The y will get a little complicated, so let's just skip that for now, because we have to do a number of different things. And then we'll just take x2. What will x2 be? Well, it'll be just i, right? Okay, and then a comma and then the y, which will be, will be filled in now, okay? So in other words, we're start, if we start a pixel, if I start a for loop at one, if one comes in, one minus one is zero, and then it's gonna start at x zero, and the sec x2, you know, the second x will be one, right? Because we're just doing each pixel. We're going pixel by pixel. Okay? So those are the two x's. This is x1, x2. So, you know, the next one will be two. Two minus one will be one. So we'll draw from one to, to x1 to x2, x2 to x3, x3 to x4, et cetera, all the way to 1,000. Okay? Now, the y is let's visualize this, and uh, I guess we'll have to uh, comment that out. If it will, otherwise, it won't run. So let's visualize this. So basically, if you imagine the array, uh, the sound, you know, the sound buffer array, it's a number between one and negative one. Now, if we were to think about that in terms of the visualization, you know, we'd normally think of this as being one, and this down here as being negative one, right? But in fact, this is like 150 pixels or whatever. All right, so basically, the first thing we have to do is we have to move sort of our zero counting point down to the middle, right? Because we want to count from there. And then we want our one instead of one to be, um, you know, 75 pixels up, up to 75 pixels up, or a negative one to be 75 pixels down, right? Okay, so which is, in fact, in, in case we change, you know, any of the parameters or something like that, it's basically we move to half the height and we go, the maximum will be the, the height, you know, the maximum will be half the height and the minimum will be half the height down. Okay, does that make sense? Now, one more little tricky thing, too, is that processing sees y as going down. So this is pixel zero up here, and this is pixel 150 down there. So we just have to invert it so that our ones is actually minusing one. So we start at the middle, we minus to go up, and we add to go down, okay? All right, so let's see if we can work that out in a way that kind of makes sense logically. So first of all, I'm gonna create a couple variables up here just so I can keep track of things. And I did that already. You can type these in. I made a, a width, a W, 1000. Now normally I put W in here just so we can keep everything kosher. Uh, and I don't have to change two places, but for some reason the new processing doesn't allow you to use variables within the size command. So you have to retype that thousand. Just make sure you update. If you update that, you're gonna change the width. You have to update it in here too. But this will allow us to make some calculations and such later, which is good. And then I have a height one, which is 150. I put that in there. And actually, I'm not sure I use it in this exercise, but let's have them anyways, because I do use them later on, I think. And then we're gonna have another integer here called buff size, and that'll just be the same amount we put in here, the sample size, okay? We gotta make sure those are the same, otherwise uh, it will get confused. Um, so that's 1,000, okay? And I'm not sure, did we create the sample array already here? Ah, maybe we didn't. So let me go over that. So maybe you're wondering how the, how we, I got this stuff, okay? Maybe I didn't do any of this stuff. Yikes. Okay, so back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. We'll go back to the drawing in a minute. Let's just sort of slap in here. 
So basically, we're going to create the sample array. So we're going to create a, an array of floats that's going to parallel this this thousand uh, uh, thousand size array that were sent over. So you see what happened was I recorded all this. I spent the, like the last hour or so recording this, and I found out I didn't press record. So I'm just trying to back up and catch up. Um, and I forgot to include this information. So uh, the way you initialize a float array is just float and then the square brackets, and then I gave it the name samp array. Okay, and then I initial I declare it here outside of the root, and then I initialize it here in setup. So um, I type here down here samp array, and I say equals a new, and the way you initialize arrays of um, floats or ints or whatever. You declare the type float, and then you declare the amount. So I'm going to create a new array of floats with this many items in it, an array that long, and the width is that 1,000. I could have put buff size as well. Maybe that would have been better. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that buff size because we want to make sure that's coordinated there. Now what this line does is it runs a for loop, basically just populates that samp array that I just uh, initialized. But when I initialize it like that, it just, they're nil. There's nothing in them, so they return nil. So I, I initialize them here with putting them, making them all zeros. So it seems like a kind of complicated way to do it. Maybe there's an easier way, but I just run a for loop int i samp array dot length, which should be a thousand i plus plus. And then you can do for loops, a shortcut is to put them all on one line, and then you don't need those curly brackets on the other end if it's on the same line. So then I say sample i, so zero, and it just equals to zero. So sample rate zero will equal zero, then one will be equal zero, just loops through, populates them all with zeros. Okay, good. All right, I think we're back on track. So back to the draw, and then, well, sorry, just down here. Then when I do this, um, when the OSC message comes in, it's going to run through that whole array that is with this for loop, runs through that whole array, that comes in from uh, Super Collider. And that's what this buff size is about. So it's going to go from 0 to 999. And all, and it's, but it's going to start the, f the first one, because remember, S buff got attached to be sent as the 0th. So we're going we're gonna to skip the first one, the 0, and we're going to go to 1. So sample array i, which is 1. Oh, that's why. So, oh, right, this has to be i minus 1. Oh no, sample i, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sample i, that's why I was getting those um, error messages is plus one. I believe that's the way it works. Uh, let me see how I did it, sorry. Uh, right, no, oh, it's all i, 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 zero. Oh right, I skipped the first one. Okay, sample a, sample a, sample a, that's fine. Okay, skip the first one, sample a, i, so number one, oh, well, this has got to be zero. Sorry. So I wonder if the, it works better if I do it one. Let's see if this works. Uh, let me, I'm going to pause you for a sec. You probably didn't notice. So um, what, no, this is fine. We'll keep this. At this, uh, right, we'll just keep this as i minus 1. That should be okay because we're going to start the sample rate at 0, but we're going to add the, you know, the i th. Now, uh, the problem why it was giving me these errors because we're just calling it too fast, I think. My computer couldn't catch up. So I just changed the little, the drawing bit. Ah, well, we didn't even get to that bit, so we'll get to there later. Okay, I just changed that. Anyways, uh, okay, so... Uh, hopefully you got through that. So do we understand now? So basically, it's coming in. This message is coming in from SuperGlider. It's an array of thousand things. Checking the the zeroth one is s buff, so it checks that address. Then we run a for loop on this buffer size, which is the same size as the uh, array coming in. First, we just advance it to to number one. We don't operate on zero because zero is this symbol. This guy. And then we populate the sample array that we just made up there. And the reason we do i minus 1, because the first i will be 1, so we want to start on the 0th count. okay? But then that gets 
I, the first one gets added to that. So it skips that. But remember, this is a thousand and one long because we added, we inserted this and we said SAM size plus one. So that's a thousand and one long. So it should still match up. So zero gets loaded with this. And we have to use this format syntax message, which is the message coming in, dot get i, which is, you know, if it's a array, it's just getting that, that bit of the message. And then we have to assign it the data type. That's just the way this OSC machine works. The OSCP5 library uses that. So just use that syntax dot float value. And then it pops it into this array. So when we complete that, when it gets that message, and then it fills a sample array, and it should be filled with all the, you know, basically the waveform, okay? And then we're just drawing this waveform, the sample array. Now, back to our drawing. So we have strokes, da, da, and then we're gonna run through the sample array, and we're gonna draw this line. We establish the X's, so because we're gonna run every pixel, zero through 1,000. We're gonna draw something for a line for every pixel. Okay, so the second bit now, needs to be uh needs to be uh the second bit now needs to be um the y okay so let's we we had this long discussion uh but i seem to be this is a very confusing tutorial sorry hopefully you still get something out of it but let's go let's just review where we were so we don't lose our place we're gonna first step we're gonna move you know all the way down and that'll be our starting place we're gonna invert the thing coming in because up is down and down is up, right? So um, positive actually goes down and negative goes up. So we're gonna have to invert the thing that comes in from super collider. And we're gonna to count to a maximum of a one and then negative one. So our, uh, our, our increment needs to be half of the in entire height, right? If we are here, then we can go all the way height and then all the way, you know, negative height would would take us that much right but we actually want to be halfway and then we got half negative height uh half height you know negative half height positive right okay so that's what we got to do so the first thing we got to do is move it down to um to the midpoint okay so our starting point will then be and just so for order of operations i'm going to put those in in parentheses will be height divided by two right that'll be our starting point so that'll be a starting y, okay? So we have to, to that height divided by two, we gotta add um, our sample array value plus half the height itself, okay? So our, our our maximum increment, you know, our maximum thing is, it's 150, so it's like 75, right? Okay? Oh, sorry, okay, let's, so no, sorry, let's take it back. Step one is to start at the midpoint, which is height divided by two. Uh, right, no, 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 okay, you, I'm still, okay. And then uh, we're gonna take the maximum increment, which is half of the height, 75. So another height divided by two. Okay, and oh, I'm sorry, we'll add, this will be adding. So we're gonna take height divided by two and then we'll add it to something. So that's the midpoint and we're gonna add something to it, right? Okay, and we'll put this entire thing, sorry about this, is in, in big brackets over here. Okay, so this whole equation has to be in these brackets so that we get the order right. So we're gonna divide high by two, and that'll be our starting point, and then we're gonna add something to it, okay? Now, what we're gonna add to it is, at the very most, the height divided by two. I don't know why I put W there. All right, but it's gonna be the height divided by two multiplied by the sample array value. So SAMP, A-R-R-A-Y, and it's gonna be the ith sample array. So sample array at the i index point, right? So the very first one, zero, we're gonna take uh, index zero, right? Uh, i minus one, right? Because that's gonna be zero that way. Zero is gonna take whatever the sample array says is zero, and then that'll be our first y. All right, I hope that follows. It does get a bit cluttered and confusing at this point, but hopefully we follow. But since this is a number between one and negative one, it'll just adjust this increment to that value. So if we come up with a 0.5, which is 0.5 of the maximum, it will take 75 divided by 0.5 and it'll give whatever, 
35, 37.5, whatever it is, right? And then so it'll go 37.5 pixels up or down, depending on this is negative or positive one or 0.5. Now, the final thing is, remember, we have to invert it because down is up and up is down. So in processing, if you go to positive Y, so if you want to start at the um, start at the middle, height divided by 2, and you want to add, like we said, 37.5 pixels, you're actually going to go down 37.5 pixels. But if sample array is positive, generally we think of that as going up, right? So we just have to multiply by negative 1 somehow or change this. Maybe the easiest way is just to simply divide by negative 2 instead of um, 2, right? That just change everything to negative. So just invert it, okay? I hope that kind of makes sense. So I'll just review it again. First step, move to the middle, height divided by 2. Second step, add some version of the waveform, either up or down. Uh, and the first part of that part is we have to invert it. So we're going to take the height. This is the maximum increment. It goes all the way either halfway up or halfway down. Since we're starting in the middle, it can go to the top or to the bottom. And to get to the top, you add that 75 pixels, right? Times by negative 2, so we invert it. Because up is down, down is up. So we take that and we multiply it by a normalized number. So sample array I minus 1 will be a number between negative 1 and 1. So if it's 1, it'll go all the way to the top. Add 75 to it. If it's 0.5, like I said, it'll go halfway up. So it's kind of handy. Okay? So that in total is our Y coordinate, our Y1. Now Y2 will be exactly the same. However, we're going to just increment it differently. We'll go to I. Right? So it's going to go from x, 0, since we start at 1, 0, the very first one, and to the 0th sample array, you know, and then doing all those uh, that math to it. And then the, the well, x2 of the line will be i, which in this case, you know, is 1. And it will draw, it will go up to the, the one ith sample array and et cetera, the increment, increment, increment from there, okay? Yeah, just bear with me. Hopefully that's clear enough. So that should draw your line, okay? And I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I have here. Yeah, all right. I think I did it slightly different order. Okay, so we'll just get rid of that there so we don't be redundant. Now, so we've drawn our waveform. Now, uh, before I have to manually send a message here, waveform, to update it, to send that bundle, okay? But in this case, I'm going to uh, send that message from processing. So we need to update our waveform, okay? So we draw our waveform down there, and now we're going to update our waveform, and I'll just uh, redo it so you can see in real time how we do that. So one thing we have to do is we ha we're going to have to have a little counter because... Um, we can do it, we're in draw right now, and if we update it every frame, it's too much. We don't need to update it that quickly. Too much information will get sluggish, and um, sending those 1,060 times a second, and it won't make any difference from us because we can't see the difference, really. So instead of that, we're going to um, put a little counter in here, okay, a little timer and it won't update every frame. We use that nice magical modulo thing. And so we have a frame count. We have a variable that's built in the processing that will give the current frame count. So, you know, 60 times a second, every time uh, it runs a frame, it'll, it'll give us the new count, okay? So this way, using modulo, we can uh, decide to wait a certain amount of frames before we actually execute. So we're gonna use if, and we're going to say frame count modulo. <coughs> Sorry, modulo some number. Um, uh, so in this case, say 12. I mean, that'll be about every 200 uh, milliseconds. Okay, frame count modulo total. So uh, equals zero, right? 
if frame count modulo 12 equals zero. So we just did that in Super Collider, something very similar. Sorry. Uh, basically, it's going to, so if it gets to, so let's say at frame um, 11, it'll be, it'll be um, a remainder one. So it does not equal zero. At frame 12, no remainder zero. Yep. Yeah, and then it'll execute whatever's in this if statement. At frame 13, it's one, no, 14, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I guess 13 is, uh, yeah, remainder one. And then, uh, you know, it'll get to um, whatever, 23, and then 24 again, it'll be equal to zero, and then it'll run it. So basically, every 12 frames, this runs this code, okay? And what do we want to run? Well, we want to send that update message. So we're going to send an OC message, and we, we've done this several times now. So it's, a C M E S S A G E, and we're going to create a variable type. We're going to variable name W F M S G waveform message, and equals a new O S C message, and it's going to be a wave W A V F R M, and that just harmonizes with our super collider because we set up our O S C def to look for W A V F R M. Okay. And we're just going to send that. We don't have to add any data. We'll just send it. So OSC machine dot send. What are we sending? We're sending WFMSG. Where are we sending to? SC. That's our net address. And there you go. It's good. So that's going to update our waveform. Okay. It's going to update our waveform. Right? So, but it's only going to do it once every 12 frames. So we're not constantly, it'll be too much traffic. Now, another thing we can do really is to only update our waveforms when we're uh, recording and not playing. Because only when we're recording will new information be put down. When we're playing back, it'll just be static there so we don't have to redraw it every 12 frames. So remember we have that uh, fancy rectog, which is nice. So we'll just do if rectog equals one. And then make sure we got all the everything contained in our brackets properly. And then you can do Command T to re um, indent everything. So if Rectog only when we record, if Rectog is equal to one, then we'll run this and draw the waveform. Okay. Uh, let me erase that anyways because it's already there. Okay. And then we run it. So um, basically, this is going to send. Uh, when we're recording, it's going to send once every 12 frames, and it's going to update, and then it's going to receive it here, and it's going to run that function waveform value, which is down here. It runs this whole function, which we went through in excruciating detail, and then send this bundle back to processing. Processing is going to get it here in this OSC event. It's going to make sure it's sbuff, and then it's going to populate that sample array with these float values that come in and then draw is going to get it because draw is going to update based on the sample array. So initially it's zero. So it's just a straight line there. Oh, I think I don't have my super client running. So let me start that over and boot it and then send that bit of code and then that bit of code. And so that's running. And if I re-record, la, 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 hello, 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 two. And then stop recording. And see, it draws a nice waveform. It's working quite nicely. There we go. I re record la, 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 hello, hello. And we can pause it there like that. Okay. Well, very good. I think that's great. Essentially, this is kind of a finished product to use as a kind of a sampler, a one track deal you can do the next time. And thanks for hanging in there. I know it was a big long haul. Uh, it was a very long tutorial and it's kind of a bit esoteric and sort of complicated stuff. But you made it through. If you don't understand some of it, and I know it wasn't the most clear because I was fumbling about at parts of it, you could uh, just you know review it again. Just watch it again until you get some or watch the parts that were particularly confusing. And hopefully that that's cleared up. Um, yeah, so it's good to use a one-track sampler looper kind of thing. Well, it doesn't loop yet. We haven't got that far yet. But sampler. Um, so the next time what we'll tackle is um, probably be a, over a couple tutorials is how to 
multi-track expand it, you know, how to get more than one track. And that does take quite a bit of doing. It's, in fact, it's a little bit involved because we're sort of, in, in a sense, adding a whole layer to the thing. And we're going to have to revise a lot of our code. So we'll take a little bit of time to do that. Multi-track. And then we'll look into the looping bits. Okay, well, good luck with that. Hopefully that works out for you.